taxes. No one likes them, except the government. Because of this, everyone wants to avoid them. This is one of the universals of life. If the government wants to take your money, people will try and avoid that. Remember when the British tried to collect taxes around the Revolutionary War? They got tarred and feathered. I'd say that's a bit overkill, but anyone trying to make me pay taxes is already in the negatives on the karma scale, so it evens out. And undoubtedly, this phenomenon extends to fiction. You think just because people aren't real means they want to pay taxes? Have you not been listening to anything I've just said? No. Where there are people, real or not, there will always be the desire to avoid paying taxes. So with that in mind, I've done some research. Some very intensive and well thought out research on the Warhammer universes and the characters that lie within them. None of the strongest or the most willful of them, or even the ones that are the most interesting. No, what I have for you today is a selection of characters that stand out to me as the people in the Warhammer universes who have undoubtedly committed no small amount of tax fraud or whatnot in their lives. Before we start, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Rebute Gilliman. See, I don't think he actually commits much in the way of tax fraud. If anything, doing that would just make his life harder. But given the unmatched level of logistical and political skill that he's got, I'm willing to bet that he's able to commit the kind of tax fraud that would make Jeff Bezos weep. That's purely hypothetically though, I don't think he's doing it. Let's move on to the real offenders. And first up, we have the premier characters of Warhammer Fantasy, Gotrick and Felix. Mostly Felix. Now I'm sure I know what you're thinking. When the hell did they commit tax fraud? And I admit I had to do some creative interpretations here. To my knowledge, there's no scene in the novels where Felix creatively fudges some numbers to avoid paying an Imperial taxman his adventuring money, although Godric might have done so. Dwarves have this thing called Reckoners that are sent out to the Dwarf Holds by the High King to collect taxes, so maybe Godric happened to have a little bit less money than he really did during one of these visits before he became a Slayer. But that's not the reason they're on the list. The true reason is the event that brought about their journey at the very start, the window tax riots. When the Empire put in place a tax based on how many windows a building had, Felix started a riot in response to this that led to Godric saving his life from the Reichsguard. Perhaps it's not exactly traditional tax fraud, you know? That's more along the lines of failing to report things, or lying about what's what, or having 50 bank accounts in an offshore business that mysteriously hasn't produced a single product in the entire time it's been around. But the spirit of this video is people avoiding the proper amount of tax that is owed one way or another, and by god causing a whole ass riot to avoid such a thing has to count for something. Way to go, Felix. You were so dedicated to avoiding taxation that you caused the bodyguards of the Emperor himself to come down on you. An inspiration to us all. Up next from the grimdark future of the 40 whatever millennium, we have Radical Inquisitors, the first category of people in this video rather than a specific person. Now the average Inquisitor probably doesn't need to bother with tax fraud. In fact, I'm pretty safe in assuming they don't really need to worry about taxes at all. But consider the Radical and Rogue ones. Not the Rogue one from the Weird Fetish book, the Rogue ones that are going against what the Imperium demands of them. The Inquisition has at least some level of internal policing, usually not enough to stop a Rogue one from committing exterminatus, but at the very least they'll strip them of their their rank after they commit it. This being 40k, that involves being executed. Small comfort for the planet that's now cinders and ashes, but hey, it's a thought that counts, right? With that in mind, radical inquisitors do the kind of things that draw eyes in a way that could end up with them burnt at the stake. So I'm willing to bet that they hide these actions under a mountain of creative accounting, albeit from the other end of the tax collection spectrum. The Inquisitors are probably the ones using a good portion of tax money after all, and naturally other Inquisitors are going to want to know where the money is going. So the Radical ones get creative. Sure, the money is actually going towards something along the lines of trying to instantly awaken the psychic potential of every human being at once, but what they write in the reports is that three planets worth of the Imperium's tax revenue is going towards the Astartes Pension Fund. Never mind that the Astartes may or may not be biologically immortal and will certainly die in combat before old age catches up with them. It's supporting the Emperor's Angels one way or another, and you wouldn't want to get in the way of that, would you, Mr. Not-So-Radical Inquisitor? Up next, and switching back over to Warhammer Fantasy, we have Grease's Goldtooth. Now, as with Felix, you might be thinking, how does he commit tax fraud? And I admit, it's once again me getting a bit creative with the definitions here. Especially because he's the one collecting taxes from the Warhammer Silk Road, rather than paying them. But hear me out. The Ogres have a deal with Cathay that they won't eat the merchants in exchange for a toll through the Mountains of Morn. So here's how I think it works. A Cathayan merchant caravan passes through the Mountains of Morn. They pay the Ogre tax, then keep going. They get stopped again. But wait, they've already paid the tax. The Ogre in charge says, no you haven't. The Cathayan caravan is technically in the right, they definitely paid the taxes, but do you think they're going to argue the point? 
I don't think they are. I think they're just going to accept an even lower profit margin because the other option is being eaten alive. And there is the true glory of Greasus's tax fraud. He just straight up doesn't need to worry about anyone punishing him for it. He'll just eat them if they complain. This applies to the ogres under him as well, too. An ogre paid Greasus his share of the toll? Well, maybe Greasus wants a bigger share today. If you say no, you have to challenge Greasus to a fight now, and he's probably going to be winning that one. Not all tax fraud has to be subtle and sneaky, everyone. It's a fantasy universe. Sometimes it's just being safe in the knowledge that anyone who tries to complain is going into tonight's stir-fry. For the next tax fraud committer, I'm up in the ante. The Caradron Overlords. All of them. This entire faction would happily commit tax fraud if they thought they could get away with it. Think about it. They're the super ultra-capitalist group of dwarves who take oaths only as seriously as they need to in order to make a profit. They have entire sections upon subsections upon sub-subsections of laws based on the best way to properly fleece stupid humans with cheap beer. There's not a chance in hell they don't commit tax fraud. You may say that with so many laws and codes and regulations that the faction is committed to being morally honest and upstanding and wouldn't think of breaking the law by way of tax fraud. Two things I have to say to that. One, taxes are a necessary evil at best. And two, all those laws and regulations are in place because they're dwarfs, not because they're willing to pay taxes any more than anyone else. They're naturally a very thorough and savvy bunch. What that means isn't that the Caradrons are all morally upstanding and created those laws to ensure the few deviants who do exist would have no way to avoid paying. It just means the laws are so clear because they're dwarfs and are going to find any damn way they can to avoid paying anything out. Say an expedition into Shyish to acquire Shade Glass for whatever reason goes off without a hitch. Now there's all this realm stone that they have to pay taxes on. So what are they to do? Well, you see, there's many ways the Caradron can avoid paying taxes on it. For example, maybe the fleet comes across a roving band of Iron Jaws riding wyverns who take down a couple of the ships ferrying a majority of the Shade Glass. Of course, these ships don't make it to port, and thus the shade glass they carried can't be taxed. The fact that these ships never actually crash and just hid behind a mountain to sail to a different port is immaterial. Those two ships not going to the main port means they're now in a lower tax bracket and have to pay less taxes. That's the kind of stuff you gotta do to efficiently tax fraud on the Caradron overlords, and with how obsessed they are with profit, I've no doubt all sorts of tomfoolery takes place. You know who else likes tax fraud in Age of Sigmar? Sigmar himself. But he's not committing tax fraud with something as simple as money. He's committing tax fraud with people's very souls. Every time a Stormcast dies, you see, their souls return to his ear to be reforged into a new body. The issue with that fact is that when people die, they're generally supposed to go to the afterlife, not back to their boss. And Sigmar, cheeky little bastard that he is, just doesn't let this happen. Stormcast just goes back to his ear regardless of the fact that people die when they are killed. Naturally, this has pissed off quite a decent number of people. Chaos, of course, doesn't like this because they so enjoy torturing the souls of people they capture and kill, and returning back home to base after dying is a real show of poor sportsmanship. Of course, demons almost always do the same thing, and plenty of their non-demonic champions have been resurrected for free with no downsides. Hey, Karn, how's it going? So I don't exactly complain about this. But Nagash? Those souls are rightfully his. He's the god of death. Why shouldn't he get the souls of Sigmar's champions when they die, instead of just a sliver of them? In a perfect world, Nagash would receive these souls, strengthening himself and maybe even the bond between himself and Sigmar with this level of cooperation between two gods. But no, Sigmar refuses to pay the soul tax and has to be a total dick about it as well. If you're thinking that this makes me sound like a Nagash apologist... Yes. There's also the Skaven, but this isn't anything new. You think a Skaven is going to be honest about anything, let alone taxes? Taxes are the least of everything the Skaven lie about. It is assumed from the get-go the average clan rat is hiding his true income, whatever the hell that might entail. That's not even to mention the fact that the average Skaven tax collector is absolutely skimming some off the top for himself, and whoever he reports to is doing the same all the way to the highest level of Skaven governess. You show me a Skaven who isn't committing tax fraud, and I'll show you a Skaven who's lying. Which, again, is all of them. None of this, however, and I mean none of this, compares to the sheer level of tax fraudery committed by none other than Belisarius Call. This man has committed so much tax fraud that the IRS has sent out organization-wide convulsions at the mere mention of this man. He isn't just the leading tech priest of the Mechanicus, he's the chaos god of avoiding taxes. And you know how I know that? Primaris Marines. For 10,000 years, Belisarius Call was working on the spaciest space marine, the Kobe beef of Astartes. And he had to keep that secret from everyone else who wasn't working on the project. And while I'm sure there's plenty of more traditional methods used to keep this secret, like just killing people who find out too much, he absolutely had to get creative with his tax reports when he was creating them. Think about it. 
There's no way the Primaris were created without astronomical levels of funding. It's just not possible. And yet, if he just reported back, I am creating new space marines, he wasn't just getting bumped into a new tax bracket because of the income involved, he's getting shot into the sun. So naturally, he would have had to lie about this. Not just to the Imperium at large, of course. The Administratum probably wondered why he needed 500 million Imperial currency units written off for the Mechanicus annual charity dance, but he also had to keep the Mechanicus itself in the dark. I know that damn near every tech priest is down with doing just a little bit of innovation, and the Mechanicus at large is willing to look the other way as long as it isn't too heretical, but this is too much even for the most radical of tech priests. Especially after that whole cursed founding nonsense. And that's all to say nothing of just trying to save every single penny he could. Again, the Primaris were undoubtedly unbelievably expensive, so he probably had to lie for more mundane reasons on top of the whole creating heretical new space marines thing. Again, going forward with the knowledge he had to keep this secret, there's no reason any single tech race would need however many trillions of dollars worth of space marine organs. That motherfucker absolutely had to lie about where his money was going, because A, he'd get shot if he didn't, and B, that stuff is expensive, so if he needs to commit fraud to get a higher tax return, then he's gonna do it. And this was for 10,000 years straight. 10,000 years of lying to Mechanicus overseers, inquisitors, and worst of all, the Administratum and their damn taxmen. I tip my hat to you, Call. Truly, no character in fiction has lied on their tax return as hard as you have. And I'm sure it goes without saying, but this of course isn't a comprehensive list of everyone who lies on their tax return in Warhammer. Every planetary governor in 40k has almost certainly skimped out on the tithe payments just a little bit, and if nothing else, whoever Thankwell does it is probably way funnier than how the average Skaven does it. But I thought I'd just go with the standouts to me, the brave bastards who screw around with taxes in the most interesting ways possible. Also, yeah, I said tithe like tithe again. It's my mouth, I say words wrongly when I damn well please. Bite me. Thank you, of course, to my wonderful channel members. You are the administratum to my Imperium, giving me tax revenue. Except for some reason, you all do it willingly. Can't say I understand the appeal, but I can't say that I appreciate it more than I can put into words. If that thank you sounded sarcastic, please keep in mind I have resting bitch everything. Voice included. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. I think this guy could take down a Primarch, no sweat. I'm still getting comments on the fucking Halo Hammer videos bitching about me saying Halo Factions could win. So how's this then? I am unironically telling you that the Speakerhead Titan could take down a Primarch. I fully believe that with all my heart and soul. This is the most Zoomer cringe whatever I've ever put in a video, and you know what? I don't feel bad about it.